Hello, everyone. Thank you for your time. Uh, we're going to be spending the next uh, couple of minutes uh, to, to talk about the Air Transport Management Program at the Singapore Institute of Technology. My name is Saik, and uh, I hope all of you are ready to board. A couple of things uh, that we will run through this uh, session is uh, we're going to be talking about the program, the curriculum, industry support that we have for this program, a, um, potential job opportunities that you will land upon the completion of the program. The people you'll be interacting with will be um, guiding you through the three-year process. Finally, we will talk about uh, admission, the process involved, key dates, as well as uh, the exemptions that you potentially will have, given that you have uh, good academic standing. The program is aimed to train the talents uh, in the air transport sector, specifically in three different areas. These are the operations, the management, as well as the business aspect. Now, the sector itself is huge. The key players are the regulator, the airlines, the airports, the ground handling agencies, as well as consultancy firms. Of course, there are a list of auxiliary partners that has not been stated here. They play a key role in making sure that the sector runs and performs as it is deemed desired. The program has three touch points. Number one, it is an industry relevant curriculum. Number two, there is an eight month integrated work study program abbreviated to IWSP in SIT speak, it is a conjunction of work and study, as the name implies. Finally, there are specialized modules uh, that include airport operations, airline marketing, revenue analysis, and fleet management. Now, those were the three touch points of the program. The three major aspects of the curriculum, naturally, the biggest one of all is the civil aviation industry, followed by business and management, that's the one in blue, and last but not least, operations and engineering, that's the one in green. Now the curriculum itself is spread over three years, nine semesters. Each year has three trimesters, and if you look at the curriculum that is being shown, the first year that you join the program, you'll be entitled to one summer break. Fortunately or unfortunately, this is your one and only summer break. Uh, many of us have heard from students that uh, they are keen to have a nice, lovely break because of the daunting challenges it's going to face them over the next two years. Some others, well, they decided that uh, they want to gain some experience, uh, be it philanthropic or be it paid. So this term of break that you have is really up to you to plan for what you wish to achieve for yourself. The first year consists of 10 modules. These are the core subjects. I'll touch a little bit towards the end of the uh, speech, but the first year includes core modules that you may apply for exemptions if you have good academic standing. More details of this will be shared uh, later on in the year, mid-year. Typically, we run a credit exemption briefing in July. Uh, more details will be shared later on. But although I have said that there are 10 modules here that are available for exemption, there is one module that is called Business Communication, and this is a compulsory subject that all of you would have to undertake. So you come in, you take the first two trimesters, complete the first year, go for your break, and then come back for the second year. Now the second year is very, very intensive, and it goes into the jigs of the entire program itself. You will have a mix, a balance of airports, airlines, engineering, and management subjects. That's the second year. And of course, the only rationale 
and the one and only important explanation for pushing you to this max is that you will then head out to the integrated work study program thereafter in year three. So you complete six trimesters and then you head out to the integrated work study program. The integrated work study program is a two trimester arrangement. You will start uh, this eight month arrangement with a potential industry hire Alongside this integrated work study program, you will also be required to undertake a module that we call a capstone project. This capstone project specifically looks at what research gaps there are in the industry or in the attachment that you are with, and then you bring it back to the classroom and you identify this problem statement, and then you work out a research project out of this. So it's real. You could argue that it's a little bit of this could be fudged, but it is real because this comes from you. The problem comes from you because you are working in it, you're seeing it, and you want to solve it. Typically, once a student finishes a eight-month attachment, which is two trimester, many of them cannot wait to come back to campus. I hope that be the same for you. Of course, there will be outliers, there will be others that feel otherwise. And when you do successfully return back to campus for the final trimester, you will then undertake a range of uh, specialization modules uh, that includes business strategies, change management, fleet management, revenue analysis, and last but not least is to wrap up your capstone project. As I said earlier, we have industry support for this program. To list some local industry support. Now I say local. I'll come back to this point in a while. Just bear with me. The regulator, CAS, Civil Aviation Authority of Singapore, that's like the police of the industry, tells you what you can do and what you cannot do and what you may do and perhaps what you could try and do. Airlines, Singapore Airlines, SQ, and then you've got Scoot. Airport, Changi Airport Group, CAG. Naturally, there are a couple of other small airports around the island. Finally, the ground handlers, SATs, and Dinata. All right, uh, with that, we've got the, um, the job opportunities. And uh, a couple of them are being listed on this slide. They include uh, airlines, airports, ground handlers, and auxiliary partners. So I'll list them. It's not exhaustive, as always, uh, because it depends on the industry needs. You've got uh, station management, you've got revenue management, marketing, operations in the airline sector. You've got airport operations and management, arrival services, departure operations at the airports, uh, both on the air and land side. Then you've got ground handlers, uh, pretty much on the ground, the apron, the baggage, the cargo, as well as catering. All right? I think food speaks a uh, universal language to everyone. So just in case you're wondering if you missed the airline food or if you wish to have more of them, that's where SATS. That's where Dinata comes in. And then, of course, you've got the auxiliary uh, vendors, partners, right? uh, consultants, just one of them. And then you've got vendors that design the airline seats. You've got the vendors as well that design the check-in processes. So these are all integral players that you do not see. These are the less glamorous things that make the entire customer journey touch points more pleasant for everyone, not just yourself, not just your friends, but anyone, anyone who's visiting the island nation of Singapore. I hope you're ready to board. If you're not, let me try and convince you a little bit more. You will interact with a couple of uh, characters here uh, over this three years that you will have with us. Three years is a short time, you can do a lot, but you will realize that many things you cannot achieve. We will try and make it possible for you to do what you want to do. And uh, a couple of characters here, uh, Eliva, Vladimir, Awat, Colin. 
So I'll go through each of them in turn. All right. This is Eleva, and uh, her teaching expertise includes airlines and airport management, tourism management, destination management. That's on the teaching side of things. On the research, uh, she's looking similar to the teaching side. Uh, add airline airport relationships as well as uh, marketing for destinations. All right. Uh, so what is it in for you, you are asked, right? Besides teaching and besides research, the uniqueness of SIT faculty is that not only do we have this teaching edge as well as research edge, we also have industry experiences. So bear with me, each of us have our own uniqueness, some more, some less, but just bear with me. I'll go through each of them in turn. For Eleva, she, whether it's lucky or not, has worked out at the tarmac at the old Hong Kong Chapla Kok Airport. She was addicted, and I say she is still addicted, to jet kerosene, jet fuel. Uh, it's very odd at times to try and communicate with her because you can actually sense that it's the kerosene speaking. And that is why she can establish this program at the very beginning, a couple of years ago, she started out this program and uh, her aim, her goal, is to get more students addicted. The next character, his name is Vladimir. And just in case you're wondering where he is from, he's a Ukrainian. I don't want to go into how many passports he has, but he is a Ukrainian. I think that speaks a lot. He's a Ukrainian who loves to travel. He is an academic who has written plenty of journal articles, has done plenty of consultancy work, has dealt with many different interactions and characters in the air transport sector. If you look at the interesting facts, look at that, and then you compare that with Eleva. I I'm not going to list everything. You can have a read on your own. All right? But what Eliver has and what Vodomir doesn't have, Vodomir balances out with his teaching expertise as well as his research expertise. Vodomir teaches economics of regulation, econometrics, economics of transportation, regulation and law in aviation. These are very, very niche subjects that you will find valuable when you come through the program. He has plenty to share because he has thought in many different continents around the world, in the Americas and in Europe, and now he's in Asia. So we're lucky, we're very lucky to have him, to bring that experience with him. His research area is in um, competition policy, airline partnerships and mergers, economic benefits of aviation, regulation and efficiency of airports and air navigation service providers. I'm sure many of us are bugged by the COVID-19 that is ever present in the background. Vladimir has been commented and he has been touted. He has asked to give his viewpoints and he has written to date and it's counting a more than handful of articles in relation to this exogenous shock that the global aviation industry is facing. So he is the go-to man, right? So if you apply, and if you get enrolled, you will not be shortchanged. The third character that I want to introduce, his name is Awad. Awad is an Egyptian. He has had a wealth of experience at Cairo Airport. He was the vice president, vice head, pardon me, of operations and he has conducted training for airport staff across Africa, Asia, and Middle East. So he is a very well-read individual. He has a depth of experience, especially at the airports. So he will be able to share, and this is evident from his teaching and research expertise. He teaches airport performance benchmarking, airport capacity demand analysis, Aviation Safety Management Systems Planning and Implementation, 
operations research and application in aviation. Now, I, I do want to emphasize this point about coming on board this program. It is all about applying what you learn. And hence, the fact that majority of us has had industry experience will be able to make fruitation to what we speak in the classroom. You'll be able to apply the theories, the frameworks, and the concepts. So this is a core biasness against applied work that we are doing for this program. On the research front, he is into airport planning, operations and management. He is also into aviation safety management systems, airport collaborative decision making, as well as airport certification and inspection. I think you can sense this here. Speak to Awad and you'll be airport out. All right, so beware when you speak to him. The fourth character, his name is Colin. Colin is from Hong Kong, but he has actually lived in Thailand. I say Thailand because he speaks fluent Thai. It's very, very impressive for an individual who can speak fluent Thai after living only for a couple of years, although he liked to think that he has lived there for more than he would like to be. He was, as well, has had uh, industry exposure with United Airlines. He was looking after United Airlines UA operations, again, out at the old Chalopkok Airport in Hong Kong. So he was, uh, naturally, if you are head of operations, you'll be looking after operations, finance, and duties. On top of that, he is also a trainer for GDS. And uh, if you haven't yet been acquainted with this term called GDS, please do. It is the global distribution system. This is how airlines put in their availability for a certain schedule, for a certain route. This is how hotels put in their rooms available for a specific date. This is how rental cars put in their availability and rates for a certain date and period of time. So this is like the mother duck of the airline industry and the airport industry. Travel industry, if you may say, because everyone would access this GDS to make bookings, reservations, so that, again, customers can have a pleasant point-to-point -point experience. Colin is a trainer for that. Uh, there are a couple of GDSs around. Uh, we're not going to give them too much credit by naming them. They haven't paid us for speaking out their name, so we shall leave that for a later time. Beyond the teaching in Thailand uh, for Colin, he has also written three textbooks on airline customer service. And this pretty much ties in neatly with what is going to be teaching. Colin is teaching everything to do with airlines, and his research is focused on customer experience, marketing, and management. Not forgetting the regulations. That's on the air side of things. And then finally, you have this character called Sek. He has a very different teaching experience and research compared to all the others. He's a very business and management individual, economics, finance, public policy, statistics, environmental economics. That's his teaching expertise. On the research side of things, he's an applied economist, does climate change, does sustainable development, and environmental policy. He has been quoted and interviewed on mainstream media across a couple of uh, issues from climate change, weather issues, plastics, pollution, and environmental degradation. And mind you, in Mandarin, so how is all that relevant compared to the rest? Well, SIG has some uh, aviation sector experience in Australia and New Zealand. Uh, it's a very small uh, area down that part of the world, so it doesn't need a rocket scientist to tell you what are the airlines that SIG has potentially worked for, had worked for, pardon me. So if we look at all of us here, we pretty much cover the entire global aviation geographic positioning. We've got Vladimir who's done the Europe and Americas. 
We've got Colleen and uh, Eliva, who has done the Central Asia, North Asia. And you've got Awat, who has done Africa, Asia, and Middle East. And then you've got Sek, who's done the Australasia. The reason why I'm harping on this is because when you are into global aviation, air transport sector, you are in the global sphere. Look outside of Singapore. Look beyond Southeast Asia, because aviation is a global business. So when you come in here to the air transport program at SIT, you will have experiences that will be shared with you from all over the world. This is the most important information that I reckon you will be interested in that pertains to admission, exemptions, and key dates. So I'll go from left to right. That's how we read anyway. Admission, we are after education qualification from polytechnic diplomas, the A-levels, the IB, and NUS high school diploma. Mathematics is a core component of the program. So there will be minimum mathematics requirement that you would have to fulfill before we invite you in for interview. Not to worry, more information of this will be shared later on. This information is also freely available on the web page. It will list out what are the minimum requirements that you need to have for academic standing before you be exempted and be invited for admissions interview. Exemptions, if I, as I have said at the beginning, the only one module that cannot be exempted is business communication that you have to take. And uh, more information will come through over the next couple of months and will be shared with you. And during the admission process, during the interviews, but lock in the middle of the year, July 2021. That's typically when we will run our credit exemption briefings. Key dates, application will start from January through to March 2021. Admission interviews will run from middle of February to the middle of April. And uh, I had mentioned earlier, that uh, mathematics is a key component of this uh, program. So if you have not met the minimum requirement, you'll be required to undertake a uh, qualifying test and that will be scheduled in March. All details about the dates uh, we will share with you in due time. So that's what we have covered. All right. Um, I don't know if you have uh, any burning, pressing concerns, thoughts, questions? I'm assuming that you have. But before you start asking or before you start thinking what you should be answering yourself with, I want you to ask yourself this one question. How much do you love this sector? How much do you want to work in this air transport sector? We often say, the individuals need to be resilient. We are in an island nation. Islanders are resilient. Beyond that, how much do you love to work in a specific industry? We are looking for people who are passionate. Eat, live and breathe the air transport sector. This may be a little bit vague for some of us to comprehend. You are asked, what is passionate? Put it bluntly, when you wake up in the morning, do you drag your feet to work or do you jump out of bed? That is a good gauge of things. If you haven't yet decided, ask yourself, can you see yourself when an industry is going through a downturn? Do you want to be there only when the industry is at its up and peak, all that glamorous benefits and things that you share with your friends, do you want to be there again when it's at its trough? 
when he is experiencing exogenous shocks, when he is experiencing pandemics, when he is experiencing global financial crisis. Again, this is something that you can ask yourself. Something passionate, it has to come from you. Don't try and fake it. Just be yourself when you come for the interview. The interview panels will be able to tell you what we want to hear from you. And through there, we'll be able to tell you whether you are passionate or not. And uh, rest assured, we will tell you. Because I think some of us need to be told. And the explanation is this. Many, many core business components make up this sector. People with financial background, people with information technology expertise, and people who have come from different industry, with different discipline, they can also join this sector. So you have to make yourself stand out, having the same discipline as the industry, being trained in air transport management, what is going to make you different to all the others? This is the passion that will make you different and stand out from all the rest. And that's all I have for you today. I hope you have benefited and learned a little bit about this program. Thank you for your time.